Starkly, um, mini posterior or conventional uh, posterior lateral approach involves uh, uh, incising or uh, teasing apart the fibers of the gluteus maximus muscle and then extending that uh, opening into the iliotibial band. Uh, Cobra Langenbeck, uh, posterior lateral Gibson type approach. Open that up, you get a broad visualization of uh, the short external rotators down to the quadratus. Historically, we would also cut the greater uh, the gluteus max tendon as it inserts into the back of the femur. That was a, a traditional wide open exposure. Superpath differs from traditional techniques because it's simply less invasive. It's certainly nice to have a small incision when possible, but the key is really what happens on the inside uh, where muscles attach to the hip and around the hip that ultimately is going to lend uh, a particular approach to a more rapid recovery. And for a lot of people, they don't have time to just spend three months at home recovering. They need to be back to work or they want to enjoy an active lifestyle. And I think clearly that's where Superpath differs from some of the standard traditional approaches. With a traditional approach, um, since you're stretching and, and pulling on tissues that you don't necessarily with the Superpath, um, I've just found that um, the patients, it feels more natural to them. They have a lot less pain early on, and it gives them a huge boost of confidence to be able to get up and walk two hours after they've left the recovery room. And, and, and so that's, there's a number of different technical differences uh, during the case, of course, but, but um, those are some of the biggies for me. That and the stability that you achieve with a hip replacement with a superpath is far exceeds what I was able to uh, accomplish in, in the traditional approach. And, and the other important um, improvement, I think, is it's really tightened my acceptance level for this is okay or this is good enough. Um, leg links are far more accurate with this for a number of reasons, but the most important reason, I think, is that you maintain such an intact soft tissue envelope compared to a traditional approach where you're taking down multiple tendons. Uh, and some people may or may not repair the capsule, that intact tissue envelope gives patients the proprioceptive uh, information they require to feel like their hip is more normal now. We see quite a few differences between a traditional hip replacement and, uh, and uh, superpath hip replacement in terms of patient recovery. The obvious ones are the ones that happen immediately after surgery. And those are um, patients don't have as much pain afterwards. They require very simplified uh, pain, pain protocol regimens after surgery. Uh, they get up and go out of the hospital very quickly. I mean, you're seeing a circumstance here where our total hip replacements are mirroring where ACL reconstruction was in the 80s, where it used to require a several day hospital stay and then all of a sudden now it's an outpatient procedure. Uh, this is where Superpath is with hip replacement. I mean, we are very easily getting patients to be an outpatient procedure. However, there's another thing that is less described, and that is, is that we see patients many months after the fact describing circumstances where their hips are feeling better, feeling more natural, feeling more normal uh, than their maybe contralateral hip that was done in another technique. And I think a large part of that is due to the fact that the hip itself has its own native neurologic status. Because the way in which we're treating the capsule is an inline incision. There's no capsular flap that's repaired. And so more than just a mechanical uh, aspect of the hip, you're having this kind of proprioceptive uh, aspect of the, of the capsule as well. And that keeps this kind of reflex loop intact around the hip, which can provide instability protection as well as a better function of, of how the patient feels.